and welcome to the channel. Here, I share scareful stories. Stories to make you scared, make you think, make you wonder, and maybe, just maybe, make you a little more careful. If you're not already subscribed, I would love it if you would subscribe to the channel. If you could also take a minute at the end of the video to give it a like and leave a comment down below, that really helps to get the video shown to more people. And now, on to today's scareful story. Well, actually, stories. Here are the scareful stories of five missing persons who have recently been found. Number one, 27-year-old missing hiker Brad Ugar was hiking in the White Sands National Park when he went missing. From Wisconsin, Brad was traveling on a solo cross-country trip. Searches for Brad began over the July 4th holiday weekend when park rangers found his abandoned car parked at the trail. For those who don't know, White Sands National Park was established in 2019 by President Trump, making it the newest national park. Prior to 2019, it was known as White Sands National Monument. The park consists of 275 square miles of gypsum sand, including a large dune field which many delight in sledding down. Here in Wisconsin, we just sled on snow. According to the White Sand Safety webpage, rangers respond to dozens of search and rescue incidents each year. It can be very hot and there is no water or shade out in the dunes. The website warns that you will most likely need more water than you think, as well as talking about the importance of not just drinking water, but also needing to consume salt or electrolyte drinks. The park advises that when you have gone through half of your water, you should return to your car. They also advise against hiking alone. As if the sun reflecting off white sand and heat isn't enough, other dangers include quickly changing weather, sudden sandstorms, shifting dunes with heavy sand that can bury and suffocate you, venomous animals including rattlesnakes, black widows, harvester ants, and scorpions, and oh yeah, unexploded ordinances from the neighboring active missile range. Searches for Brad included federal officers and a military helicopter. His body was found two miles northeast of the trail. There were no signs of foul play, and Brad had a backpack and water bottles with him. He was found exactly one year after 63-year-old hiker Jeffrey Mishnu from Moriarty, New Mexico, was found deceased in the park. Number two, Duncan Alexander Burrell Gordon was reported missing on May 5, 2022, from his job at a recycling plant in South Carolina. The 20-year-old was last seen working on top of a plastic shredding machine. After he was reported missing, the machine where he was last seen was inspected four times. The first time, it was inspected by Duncan's own father, who is a supervisor at the plant. When nothing was found, the machine was started up again and continued to process plastic. In between the time Duncan went missing and investigators coming to search, around 30 tons of plastic was processed on the machine. A second search yielded no clues, but during a third search, including the use of a cadaver dog, dried blood and tissue fragments were found under a support for the conveyor belt at the plastic shredding machine. The material was tested and shown to belong to Duncan. A fourth and final inspection resulted in more human tissue being found and collected. In total, only two ounces of skin, bone, and fat were recovered. The Spartanburg County Coroner says that Duncan fell into the plastic shredder. OSHA is investigating Duncan's death and the sheriff's office is keeping quiet on if their investigation is that of a suspected accident or murder. Number three, Jesse Wilfong, 21, was reported missing on May 24, 2022 by her mother after she was picked up at her home by her uncle and then never returned. Her uncle and his girlfriend said Jesse sat with them around a bonfire and they were all talking and drinking. At some point, Jesse asked to be taken back to her home but her uncle and his girlfriend refused and instead went to bed. They claim that Jesse must have left once they were in bed. It took over two weeks for investigators to obtain a search warrant for the girlfriend's home. There, they found that portions of a carpet had been pulled up and removed, which pretty much screams foul play. Three days later, investigators found what they believed to be recently moved dirt in their barn. When they dug in the spot, they found Jesse's remains. Her cause of death was determined to be murder, and both her uncle and his girlfriend had been arrested. 
Number four, Christy Thomas was only 25 when she went missing seven years ago on June 19, 2015. She was last seen on the east side of Cleveland, standing on the sidewalk, possibly waiting for a ride. She had gotten into a fight with her boyfriend and then called a friend hoping to get a ride. The friend didn't answer the phone, however, and what happened to Christy after that is unknown. After her disappearance, Christy's boyfriend was questioned several times, but has never been charged with any crimes related to her disappearance. Then, on May 14th, a worker found human bones in a field near the 3500 block of East 55th Street in Cleveland. The field is very close to where Christy was last seen. DNA has revealed that the bones belong to Christy. Christy's sister said about the discovery, I can't put into words how I feel right now, but just know this is our first step towards healing. We don't have to wonder if she is alive or an angel. She gained her wings. We love you so much, Christy. Christy's death is being investigated as a suspicious homicide. Number five, we'll end with the story of a missing eight-year-old boy that has a happy ending. On June 17th, a boy, only being named as Joe, went missing in northwest Germany. He was last seen playing outside and in the days following his disappearance, the surrounding area was thoroughly searched. Those searches included sending a robot with a mounted camera on it into the sewer system. Joe had been missing for over a week when someone who lived in the neighborhood reported hearing noises from underneath a manhole cover. Police investigated and found the boy naked but alive and without any serious injuries. The manhole covers are not easily removed so police assume that Joe crawled through a drain into the sewer system. The drain is three feet wide but after about 75 feet the boy would have had to have entered a pipe that was only 23.6 inches wide. Some of his clothes were later found in the pipe. At some point he must must have become disoriented and couldn't find his way back out. What he did find was a spot underneath a manhole cover, and that is where he began making noises for help. The boy was taken to the hospital to be treated for hypothermia and dehydration, and his father has thanked everyone who helped in finding his son. And on that happy note, everyone stay safe, stay out of sewers, and stay careful. Stay careful.